Don't put the cart before the horse. Sharon Hornell's from here with my little cart and my little horsey. Not with the magnet noise making puzzle. That thing drives me crazy. Our idiom today, our expression is don't put the cart before the horse. Well, what does this mean? This idiom's been around and very popular since it was a popular saying, it was a popular figure of speech in the, way back to the, the 16th century. So back in the 1500s when people traveled by horse and they had carts to move things around. Remember the days before the amazing times we live in now when you can hop on an airplane and get some, well, without COVID, you can hop on an airplane, you still can, and get wherever you want to go, almost anywhere in the world. Uh, they were using the expression, don't put the cart before the horse, meaning, you know, don't do the wrong things, don't do things in the wrong order. There's a, there's a way we do things. There's a way we attach the cart to the horse and the, the horse is in the front of the cart, pulling the wagon, pulling the, the load, the heavy load, or the people, or whatever it happens to be pulling, but the horse definitely needs to come before the cart. There's a lot of other uh, idioms and expressions that sort of mean this, but I don't think they really fit the bill particularly well. You know, catch someone napping. I, I, I don't think that means the same thing, at least not to me, as don't put the cart before the horse. To me, don't put the cart before the horse is more like never drive faster than your angel can fly. This used to be in my car and I meant to give it to my son because when my son and daughter both started driving, I gave them this just as a reminder to like slow down. And, and I just found it when I was going through some things. I'm like, oh, I have to give that one to my son because he lost his. So I think when one of his car accidents or in a car crash, he lost it. But to me, this one, this idiom is all about realizing that when we're doing projects, when we're doing things, when we're planning things, there's actually a sequential order to some things. Some things it doesn't matter what order you do them in. Other things it's very important. If I am building a house and my ex-husband and I built our house and we were the general contractors for that. It turns out my, my ex actually worked with almost every single general contractor except one, I think it was the siding guys because it was cheaper for to, for them them and less expensive, not cheaper, for them to just do it than for him to help them or, or have any part of the project or to go out and source the materials. But in building a house, that was a huge project, a big project for my husband, and he'd done smaller projects before, but being the general contractor, he learned that certain things had to be timed and done before other things. You have to dig the foundation and lay the foundation in the bricks before you can do anything else. You have to actually clear the trees off of the, the site and level the site before you can do anything else. So there's a sequential order. Same thing in our businesses. Uh, if you want to install a new system, like we, I've been part of projects where we've installed, you know, company-wide, organization-wide, multi-unit organization-wide new computer and information systems. I am from the age of when computers were first being used in our businesses and in our companies. Uh, whether you've rolled out a product, a new product or service, started your business, growing your business, <laughs> your business whatever it is you want to do, we do things in certain orders because it, it works and it makes sense. Now, do we always do it in the right order? Heck no, that would mean that you know we were perfect and nobody's perfect, no business is perfect. We, we try things and we find out, oh, I needed to do this before I could possibly do that. I needed to understand what my customers want before I decide what kind of products and service and problems I can solve for them with the products and services that I am super talented and love creating. I have to, I have to know what I'm doing to a certain extent before I actually do it. You know, there's all kinds of ready, fire, aim, you know, philosophies out there, but the fact is you have to have an idea, figure something out, take action, see what kind of a result you get, and hope it's moving in you, not hope, but make sure it's moving you in the right direction, or you don't keep doing more and more of it. And then you create processes and procedures and systems and routines and habits that make sure those things happen in the right order once you define the process, once you know what the right order is. But to me, this, this whole expression, this idiom is about thinking through your processes, thinking through, well, how do we do this? A lot of times in organizations, we just do things because that's the way we've always done them. Well, that's just the way it's always been done here, Sharon. That, I used to just cringe whenever I heard that in corporate America because it was like, it meant that they were doing something, they had just figured out a way to do it, a way to do it, and they had never looked at and said, is there a way we could do this better? Is there a way we could do this easier or faster or more efficiently or more effectively? They just said, well, this, we did this, it worked, it got us a result, 
Is it the best result? We don't even know because we've never even asked ourselves the question about how and what we do, much less if we optimize the process. So, love this idiom. I don't think we hear it very much these days. More often we hear ass backwards when something doesn't work out than we hear uh, putting the cart before the horse. Why? Because most of the people that are out in the business world and out in life these days have never even thought about or seen, unless it's in an old time movie, a, a horse pulling a cart of stuff, a horse pulling wagons. They've never seen it in their real life. I, I guess, if I'm honest, I've seen carts and horses and things, and I've seen, uh, you know, in, in uh, Amish communities and things, but I've never lived in the, in the time when, you know, horse and buggies and carts and horses were moving materials. You know, I was born in the 60s, so I can't say that I've actually experienced it, yet there were more um, Westerns and old-time movies and things back when I was a little girl, you know, when TV was just getting started. <laughs> so I, I understood the reference, but I don't think I've, I have heard people say, don't put the carpet before the horse in corporate America, as well as just out in my everyday life. Probably my parents used to tell us that when we were doing something ass backwards, because sometimes we do that. Love to know your experience with this particular idiom, this expression, this, it's a proverb. Don't put the cart before the horse. Uh, what kind of, what, what have you done? How have you experienced this? Have you got a story where somebody has used this expression and told you that? Because you were doing something backwards. Usually when it's, we're learning something new, when we're at a new job or when we're in a new situation that we've never done something before, we'll, we'll mix up the, the order of doing things until we're shown or taught or, or figure it out or figure out a, a, the best way to do something. We will automatically put the cart before the horse because we don't know that the horse needs to go first. Have an amazing day. I'll be with you around with another interesting idiom. What does it mean? Where does it come from? And how might you use it in your life and growing your business right now? Have an amazing day. Bye.